more microbes than all than the total number of humans who ever lived. Mm. So what ask yourself what are you to those microbes? Are you Joe Rogan? No, you are an anaerobic vessel of fecal matter in which they thrive. And without them, you don't exist. Well, you don't digest your food, first of all. Second, you want to keep them happy because if they're not happy, then they're in charge. Mm. They send you to the nearest toilet as fast as can be. So part of a cosmic perspective on this world is looking at things in a way that decentralizes who and what you are relative to everything else. And you get a much more honest account of how things work, how they're put together. That's very hard for people to really grasp. It's an ego. You're, you're actually an ecosystem. Yes, yes. And what is the number? There's some some percent of your total body weight is the weight of other living things, yeah. especially what's alive and thriving in your gut. You're just carrying them along. Well, isn't that that's the case with all organisms, though? We like to think of organisms as being individuals, but they're actually no, hosts. No, I, I don't think... Well, Ame- not all, amoebas have not, not when yeah, you get down yeah, to single cells. When it, not single yeah. cells, but others, yeah. yeah. A lot of symbiotic uh, relationships going on. Oh, yeah. And so you can have a cosmic perspective that's not just the cosmos. Yes. The cosmic perspective just here, life on Earth. And, um, you know, they talked about the overview effect where the astronauts, you, know, you probably had a few astronauts here yes. as your guest. Um, Looking down. Yeah. yeah, you look You look down. I, I prefer the view from the moon. I'll take it from orbit. Are you going to do any of those? Like, would you, if they let you up on the Jeff Bezos spaceship, they send people up there all the time yeah, now, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. It's fairly regular. I'm an astrophysicist. You're not interested? No, let me, let me, let me okay. hear me out. Hear me out. So take Earth and shrink it down to like a schoolroom globe. So now we can think of distances relative to that. And ask, how high up did Bezos and Branson go? Okay. So here's the school and go, how far away would you say? Quarter inch. You say quarter inch? Okay, they went the thickness of two dimes. Oh. And a boy who jumped out of a balloon some years ago? Yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, Felix Baumgartner? Mm-hmm. Thickness of one dime. So this idea that they're going, oh, I see the curvature of the earth. And this. No, you don't. You don't. I'm sorry. That Jeff Bezos doesn't see the curvature of the Earth. You will, you will see the edge of the Earth, but ask how far away is your horizon when you're only that high up. You can just look at that. Go to the schoolroom globe. Go two dime thicknesses up, and then draw a line to how to ask how much of Earth do you see. You'll see a circle, but that's a circle cookie cut out of the larger sphere. So it's a perspective issue. It's a perspective issue. And by the way, the images when they showed uh, Felix Bumgardner, where he's prepared to jump, you see this curved earth. That's a fisheye lens, dude. Okay? Fisheye lenses take horizontal lines and bend them convex when you're above the midplane of of the photo. In order to gather in okay. more of the image. Correct. That's the only way you can distort it to fit it onto a flat plane. Because right. it's looking at a full sort of 360, well, 180, all right, and it's trying to get it in. But what happens if you take that horizontal line, the horizon, and put it below the midplane of the camera? It then bends the other way. Mm. Bends the other way. In fact, I have, a, um, I have a tweet that did this. Look for Felix and put, throw some keywords in there with my... Twitter handle, and I have the example of the photos. So, no, he didn't see the curvature of the Earth, but you think he did, and he's high up, and what do we need NASA for, right? He's one dime dime thickness. Um, Elon Musk authentically goes into orbit, because they didn't go into orbit. They went up and fell back to Earth. Mm -hmm. He authentically goes into orbit. So he is a centimeter. Well, not even. Uh, Let me see. Yeah, a little less than a centimeter above Earth's surface. The folks who really saw Earth were the, 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 the folks that went to the moon. We went to the moon nine times, three astronauts a pop. 27 astronauts have seen Earth from the moon. And that'll change you. That, do you know Apollo 14 astronaut, Edgar Mitchell? I have a quote from him that opens 
this book. And that's all you have to read because the whole book issues forth from that quote. You know, right? Here it is. Mm -hmm. Edgar Mitchell, Apollo 14. You develop an instant global consciousness, a people orientation, an intense dissatisfaction with the state of the world and a compulsion to do something about it. Mm. From out there on the moon, international politics looks so petty. You want to grab a politician by the scruff of the neck and drag him a quarter million miles out and say, look at that, you son of a bitch. Edgar Mitchell also believes some wacky stuff. Did you know that? Yeah, I've spoken with him about it. And he uh, he was one of the, uh, was he co-founder of the Noetic Institute? Mm. He was He was a big fan of the possibility that there was a deeper level of consciousness. And I don't think it involved drugs, but just that there was a deeper level of consciousness that the brain might be capable of if subjected to the proper influences. And he told me how he came across this. Okay, I'll tell you. They're on their way back from the moon and they're in the capsule and the capsule rotates. It helps to stabilize it among other reasons for that happening. And he happened to be positioned in the capsule for three days where the windows to the capsule were aligned with the plane of the solar system. Which means every time the capsule rotated, what came in and out of view was the sun, the moon, earth, and all the planets. And so he's there for three days watching this drift by. And he felt like he had descended or ascended into a trance state that was beyond what he had ever experienced here on earth by normal things you encounter just being a human on earth. And that led him to wonder whether this was an achievable state by some other means, by some other forces that you could emulate here on earth. And because he experienced that and I didn't, I, what am I, who am I to say? I, I'm not, I'm not going to judge that. He believed in psychokinetics. He believed people can do things with their mind. I, 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 he, he had a lot of like very strange things. That I he think was he. Interested in. I think that the the cleanest way to say that is, he believed there was much more capacity of our mind than we had previously tapped. Mm, yeah. And that opens up the gates to all these other things. But I, I was I was just sharing with you the the psycho the 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 experiential origins of why he thought that way. Yeah. But uh, the point is that that can change you. And uh, in the chapter Earth and Moon, I talk about cosmic perspectives. As, as you were saying,